driving down this road before I remember every tree Every single blade of grass Was a special place for me and I remember every town Every hotel room Every song I ever sang guitar out of tune I remember everything things I can't forget the way you turned and smiled at me on the night that we first met and I remember every night your ocean eyes of blue how I miss you in the morning like roses miss the dew I've been down this road before Alone as I can be Careful not to let my past Sneaking up on me Got no future in my happiness No regrets are very few Sometimes a little tenderness Was the best that I could do I remember everything Things I can't forget Swimming pools on butterflies that slip right through the net I remember every night Your ocean eyes of blue How I miss you in the morning light Like roses miss the dew How I miss you in the morning light Like roses miss the dew Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock. Thank you for being here today. It is a holiday weekend, and, and they're here with us. They are. This is awesome. Glad to see you all. <laughs> like, but of course, you know, we always have great things going on here. We have our, our picnic, indoor picnic today. So I know there's part of the reason you're here. But the other reason is just to be together. Isn't that awesome? Just to be together and to share these moments. And today being Memorial Day weekend, it's about the memories. It's about creating the memories and finding those memories that support you and how you want to grow forward. So welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Woodstock. My name is Reverend Mary Patrice Wendt. I am the spiritual leader here. And I'm Reverend Tom Wendt. It's just a joy to look out upon your faces and spend this Sunday morning with you. Hello, everybody. So let's go ahead and begin with a prayer. Let's take a deep breath. Mm. Well, let's just settle into the thought and the idea and the heart of memories. Being Memorial Day weekend, it is about those ideas and and beliefs that have formed us from the past, it, they have brought us here right now. They may have influenced us to be something we want to be. They may have, have led us down paths that maybe we didn't want to be. But we always have the opportunity to take that memory and to allow it to inspire us to inspire us to be something new, something different, something golden in this time, this place and space. So let's just honor the fact that we have these memories that have formed us and grown us and molded us, and yet we know that we have the choice to choose something new, to allow them to move us into an inspired way of being. 
thank you, God, for the opportunity to have the freedom to choose, the freedom to be, the freedom to know that I am a spiritual being having a human experience. And this moment, with all that I've been through, this moment is mine to choose, to know and to grow into being who I am within. Thank you for this time, this life, this place, this space, and those that support me in it. Thank you for the experience and the understanding that I have gained. And thank you for the time that I have in this breath to be something more. And in the light of our master teacher, Jesus, and the guidance and the, the knowing that we can be all that we dream of. We say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and begin with our five unity principles, the basis for all that we do. Together, please. There, there is, is only, only one presence and one power in, in the universe, universe and, and in, in my life. life. God, the good omnipotence, the Christ spirit lives within me. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. I experience God's presence and power through prayer and meditation. I put my faith into action by demonstration. Unity is a belief system that honors the Christ presence within you, that when the Bible talks about you being an extension or a creation of a higher source, that that is still there. That is a part of your very nature, part of who you are in your deepest knowing. We honor the fact that there is a guidance system that comes with that, that resonates with you when something makes you feel alive and joyful and loving. We honor the fact that there is something that tells you what is your path. So we do not discourage any path that leads someone forward. If it is a belief system that is more structured and that helps you to feel like you are in alignment with who that person is on the inside, we support you in doing that. If you are someone that believes or feels a lot more in alignment with something less structured, that's more idea flowing, that is more hmm, open to interpretation, we support you. We hope that you find tools that we offer and introduce you to that allow you to find that inner guidance system, that allow you to feel comfortable and, and trusting in what that has for you. And we help you by being a community that says, what does it feel like for you? Is that something that supports your well-being? Or is it not? So this is a community of people that care and support not telling you how to live, but helping you to see what's within you to grow into how you want to live and be. So. We know and honor the divine essence in you and support your goal in that. At this time, I am ready to in introduce our music team today. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I always go one way. I'm just a little different today. <laughs> well, a little different every day, but that's OK. So <laughs> our music team this morning are Mr. Ken Johnson in the green. He's our leader, and Mr. Rich Prezioso, our guest for today. Thank you so much. And the team that helps us hear the most, especially best, both online and in person, is our tech team, Mr. Joe Joswiak and Mr. George Mulligano. Thank you so much, and take it away. So ladies and gentlemen, today um, for Memorial Day, we're going to feature an original song by Rich Precioso. That's me. Um, uh, 
Um, uh, I, I always joke, um, when people ask me to sing in the morning, I, I say it's, 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 well, well, let's see how it goes. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, this, is, this song has uh, um, been very special to, to us. And I wrote it a long time ago. And for years, I hope you don't mind, uh, Tom. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry. I hope you don't mind me talking about it a little bit. But uh, for years, Jackie, my wife, and I uh, traveled the country for years playing, playing music. And uh, we'd o I would always introduce this song with what Jackie would call the sermon. Mm. And, uh, and it was basically just trying to give examples from our travels about how, how surprising it is to meet people you don't know outside of your circle of friends and how similar most of their interests are, and are to you. And uh, it, it just seems to get harder and harder and harder and harder as every year goes by these days. And I hope we don't give that up. Let's try it. My grandmother had three sons She dreamed about her children's children Then came 1941 Only one son would see the war end Joseph died marching in Batel, Frank on the sands of Iwo Jima, the day the bomb destroyed Japan. She thanked God and Harry Truman. She blamed the godless Japanese for having crushed her sweetest dreams 1,000 candles for my sons Every day I will remember In Illinois, far from her past Miss Nakamura still remembers she was six when she saw the flash that turned the world to smoke and ashes. And mother taught her daughter well, run from the fire to the river. And there she found a living hell, but not a mother or a father. She survived with just a scrape Her family vanished into space One thousand suns A thousand cranes Every day I will remember Never dreamed she'd have a daughter, but at the age of 81, she met a nurse named Nakamura, and it was a question only meant to make some talking past the hours about a picture by the bed. A photograph of two young soldiers Hatred and anger stored for years Slowly melted into tears One thousand candles A thousand cranes Every day I will remember I have a picture in my mind of two women slowly walking August 6th, 1985 
Walking to church to light a candle And they once asked me to explain Why grown men play such foolish games One thousand candles A thousand cranes Every day I will remember Let's enter into a time of reflection together. Please sing with me. Our thoughts are friends, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are friends. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always here. And every thought becomes a prayer. And every thought becomes a prayer. Just enjoy it. <laughs> mm. Such a beautiful segue from Rich's song to Ken's to the tones of a cell phone. <laughs> Bring us into a time of, of reflection. So this is our time where we go within and assume the position where we feel most comfortable. Many of us will close our physical eyes as we enter into guided meditation, but it's up to you. This is your time. And invite you to enter this time with a great big deep cleansing inhale and exhale and perhaps feel your shoulders drop just a bit as you exhale and relaxation enter your body. Together, please. human beings having a spiritual experience. Sometimes we need to prepare this body so we can accept that experience. That's what we're doing here today. Breathe into the idea of relaxing into this moment. Just breathe into it and surrender to it. This is a weekend dedicated to remembrance, isn't it? Certainly to those we refer to as our fallen heroes, the veterans of the battlefield that did not make it home. Let us just focus on that idea for a moment of countless individuals going way back into time that engaged in the, as Rich's song alluded to, something like the foolish behavior that we engage in. Perhaps you know of someone who who did not return. 
and perhaps you simply know of somebody. Remember them now. Simply remember them. Let your spirit and theirs connect in this time of solemn remembrance. War is simply one of the expressions of violence that this world seems to engage in too frequently. Let us also remember those who died to violence in whatever form. Perhaps you know someone who has or know of someone. Bring those who have died as a result of violence. Unite them with your spirit now. Feel it in your heart. Feel their presence. Their physical body has left this earth. I do not believe their spirit has left this universe. So much loss to remember, eh? Too much loss to remember, I think. And yet let us remember Let us reach deep into the spiritual heart of who we are. To remember so deeply and ask ourselves, what is mine to do here? What is mine to do in this solemn time of remembering? What is mine to do? It's a question only you can answer. So much loss, so much needless loss. What is mine to do? Those of you who have been lost to whatever form of violence, I think of you. Some days you're with me. Some days not so much, but I always know that you're there. And I am saddened by your loss. And as we bring ourselves back to this time and this place, this beautiful sanctuary and these wonderful souls with whom we share it. Let us continue to remember and to ask ourselves, what is mine to do here? What is mine to do? And so it is. Amen. a lot of stuff in there mm -hmm. a lot of a lot in that song a lot of that prep that meditation I'm like wait a minute I'm already getting teary-eyed one of the things I try to diligently accomplish is to show up and be authentic in my talks and in authentic in my perspectives and I'm I'm coming to this day Memorial Weekend, and I'm struggling, and I'm thinking, how do I show up and do that? I'm feeling really unqualified. I feel really, um, 
at a loss to be able to tap into this event because I've never served in the military. I've never had the experience of being drafted and what that feels like to hold that letter in your hand that says your life is taking a new direction that maybe you didn't plan. I've never had the experience of losing someone to war. And I've, but I've met a few people who have. I've met a few people who were willing to, to sign up and, and serve. And they think about them. And the people that signed up just had this unusual quality about them. They had this air of confidence, of certainty, of purpose, of, of knowing this is what they were here to do. They had like this wider view of the world and the impact that they wanted to make. They, what they were, were they going to come back? They didn't, it didn't even occur to them that they knew that that was a possibility, but they knew that that was something they were okay with. Did they come back? I don't know. Because I didn't know enough to follow their story. There's a man called Ed Tick and his wife Kate Dahlstedt. They were founders that it's not uh, available anymore, but they were founders of a group called Soldier's Heart. And they worked with former military members who experienced PTSD. From their perspective, these people they, these people experienced soul wounds through their experiences and what they were required to do. This couple believed that soul wounds are sacred and that their work focused on spiritual restoration leading to that knowledge and transformation coming back into that heart space, who they were created to be from the beginning. They say, I think most people get confused on why we focus on the spiritual wounds, but if you think about it, the battlefield is the most spiritual place there is. You're dealing with good and evil at its most profound. Life and death is in the hands of our soldiers, and that makes it a profoundly spiritual experience. The archetypal warrior is not necessarily a fighter, but someone who stands for truth and integrity. That's who they go in with, the vision of who they are. And they are there to protect and defend the people. This is what they want to exemplify. And when they go into the military, they experience things that uh, they have this code of contact, it, conduct that has this great honor in doing the right thing, but the problem is they actually experience certain circumstances that face them with a moral dilemma that makes it impossible to live up to that code of honor. I may not have experienced war firsthand, and I really... It took me a while to get settled into this talk. But I've experienced, what I realized is I've experienced the benefits that these people have given me because of what they chose. They walked into the crossroads of conflict for me. And many st may still be there experiencing it emotionally or in reality right now. Today, I am grateful to be abundantly blessed by the sacrifice of others. Mm. I think it's a good point that <clears throat> I mean, we're here today because... Uh, some of the words that were fought were, we didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And they did defend our, um, what we have. 
And you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking back to the fall of 1963. Uh, the Vietnam War was heating up uh, to the point that a, we did not have a draft back then, but one was initiated. And it was initiated along with a lottery. Back then, they probably used ping pong balls, not a computer, but they'd pick a date and a number and deciding who was going to be called first. Of course, after the drawing, everyone wondered what their number was, and when I saw mine, I thought, yep, I'm going to be called. And I received a letter. I think it began with the word greetings, as I recall. And it directed me to report to a processing center on Madison Street in Forest Park, Illinois. Put my car up for sale. And I don't recall how I arrived at that processing center, but when I walked in, I saw many of my schoolmates there, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, others I didn't know, obviously. And we were processed. It's a long line of stations, and we were processed. And at the very end of the line, there was an exit door, and outside that exit door were a number of buses waiting to take us to training, military training. And when I got to the end of the line, the guy looks at my records, he looks at me, he says, where's this information on your asthma and your allergies? And back then, thinking that Vietnam was a noble cause, I said, you know, I, I don't care if I go. I, I don't want to, I don't, I didn't provide it because I don't care if I go. He says, the only place you're going is home. He says, we need, we need that information. I felt a failure. All these other people were going out the exit and I went out the entrance. I ultimately provided the information they requested and I was labeled 4F, unfit for military duty. Back then we said that meant women and children first. Another slap for a talk later. A year or so later, another young man named Tom who walked uh, the same halls I did, was drafted, went through the process and stepped into a bus, went to training and finally went to Vietnam. I say finally because that time did not return. Last summer, we visited Washington, D.C. and made it a point to stop in at the Vietnam Memorial. I found his name among thousands of others, thousands of young people. And I gazed at that memorial, and I said, why? Why? A lot of whys, but why? In my later years, I came to believe that the Vietnam War and some other subsequent wars weren't the noble undertakings that I was told they were. And I've come to realize that wars, while supposedly representing nations, are actually representative of a relatively small number of politically powerful individuals and what they want in this world. More on that in a moment.
My father served in the Korean War. He talked very little about it. He was drafted, served his time, and was honorably discharged. He did not want to be there. I don't know if he served on the front lines, but I, and I don't think he did, but I could be wrong. He would never say. I do know it impacted him profoundly, and he hated guns. And he was part of a generation that believed that once you got out of the military, you took care of yourself. You handled all of the effects of what was you experienced while you were gone. I can tell you that it affected him. On top of a difficult childhood, all of his relationships with family and how he saw others in his job. He didn't have very many friends, but he was very upstanding in the community. He did a lot of good for, for other people. Openly sharing his feelings was very difficult. And his life experiences wounded him internally, and he struggled to let others get close. He's gone now. I had a living veteran, veteran living in my home, and it never occurred to me that he was anything more than my dad. The meaning of that never crossed my mind. I never put all the dots together to really be aware of what it, life might have been like for him. I did try to connect with him at times. I'd ask him about, you know, why this? What, tell me what you were thinking. Why did this happen? And he would say the things, the past is the past. Yep. I am not going back there. didn't help me to connect or feel close to him. In fact, for many years after my parents divorced, I, was a, I estranged myself from him until just before he passed away. It never occurred to me that perhaps some of his shortcomings were just reenactments of what was trained into him and had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And I wonder to myself, how much of the same thing comes out of me? Today, I am grateful to be so abundantly blessed by the sacrifice of others. Well, you know, <clears throat> back in the day, it was uh, the past is the past, be a man and just get on with it and how harmful that kind of thinking is. Well, <clears throat> pardon me, earlier I, I, I was talking about standing before the Vietnam Memorial and other memorials in that er area that are just so heart-touching and heart-wrenching of D.C. and asking myself why. I wasn't even sure what the question was, but why? But asking, realizing, that could have been me. My name could have been up there on that wall if I'd have gone out that exit door onto one of those buses. There's a trucking company in this area that has posted photos of soldiers who were killed in action, probably, probably Iraq and Afghanistan. And on the side of their semi-trailers, big, huge photos headlined by our fallen heroes. <clears throat> Many of you have seen them. Today, Memorial, or tomorrow, Memorial Day is dedicated to our fallen heroes. And in asking myself why, <clears throat> I wonder, what if I had boarded that bus? 
went off to training and while serving in the military was killed in action. Would I be referred to as a hero? And if so, would I be a hero because of some heroic action I had taken? Or just maybe? Would I be referred to as a hero because it would be way too hurtful and unpleasant and awful to say that I died because a few powerful politicians thought it'd be a good idea that a few thousand young people die because of their values. I wish to clearly state I am not in any way disrespecting or disparaging those who have lost their lives on the battlefield. I cannot imagine, I have no idea what that experience would be like for the soldiers or their family. I want to make that abundantly clear. It is, however, my intention to very clearly question the system that sends them there, that engages in the foolishness of war. It is my intention to question politicians who place their self-interest and values over and above the common good. Today we see thousands of Russians and Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian civilians dying because one particular powerful politician thinking it a good idea that they die for his cause. I don't see where the Ukrainians have a choice but to fight. In my mind, they do seem like heroes. Outnumbered and out-equipped, fighting for their homeland. And yet I wonder how many Russian soldiers would rather be at home with their family than dying on a battlefield. Russians are stuck with their leadership. Supposedly they have elections, but they don't. Generally speaking, while there might be a few exceptions, we do. I believe that is what is ours to do is vote for politicians who would be unlikely to see war or any type of violence as an acceptable resolution except for the most dire of circumstances. And those who place common good above their personal gain. June 28th is primary election day And I suggest we all influence the system as best we can by voting (coughs) our values. Whatever they may be. We don't tell you what they ought to be in unity. We just empower you to carry them out. If you cannot vote in person, then vote by mail. You may request your vote (coughs) by mail ballot at www.illinoisvotes.com 2022.com. MP will include that website in her email blast today. You use it to request a ballot, it's mailed to you, and then you mail it back. So it takes some time, so you need to act on it, or you can also maybe do it by email. Do your research. Send your message to politicians that you want a system not that provides personal gain for a few, but instead reflects the values and good of the greater community. Thank you. It's about empowering. It's about being empowered. Mm -hmm. In closing, today I am grateful to be so abundantly blessed by the sacrifice of others. And I choose to take the actions within my power to lessen the need for them to sacrifice their personal health, sacrifice their emotional health, sacrifice their spiritual health, as well as those that love them. 
My wish is for all to be born free, to wildly dream of the possibilities of living with those they love. If there are any veterans in this sanctuary, please stand and be recognized today. I'd like you to keep standing and I'd like to give you the unity blessing, please. Mm. We, we love you, we bless you, we, bless you, we appreciate you, we behold the Christ in you, and, and we empower you to do great things. Amen. Thank you. Amen. My goodness. May you be gifted with a life that is wild with possibilities for happiness. Let it be so, and so it is. Namaste. Let's sing a chorus of America together, please. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. For amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain, America. And now <laughs> we're going to completely <laughs> shift gears, so to speak, um, and uh, to support our bike and motorcycle blessing, we have this for you. Smoking lightning, have a man of thunder, wrestling with the wind, and I'm feeling that we're under. Yeah, darling, gonna make it happen. Take the world in a love embrace. Fire all of your guns at once and explode in the space like a true nature's child. We were born, born to be wild Born to run so high And never wanna die Born to be wild Born to be
sun explode in the space like the true nature's child we were born born to be wild we could climb so high and never want to die born to be wild born to be I needed that. <laughs> oh, it is that special time in our <laughs> service now. We just concluded a special time. Now we're on to a new one where we collect and receive your gifts of tithes and offerings. We welcome your gift. If you are online at unitywoodstock.org or the giving tab, Joy of Giving on in the feed underneath our service. We are self-supporting all your donations. All of your donations go to help us continue doing what we do here, being the presence in this community that we want to be sharing our space with 12-step groups, for, with free guitars for future stars, for different people that need a space to show up and gather, connect and grow together. So if you would please take out your, your tithe, hold it in your hand. There's, the gifts come in all forms and shapes. Hold it in your hand, please, as together let's acknowledge these blessings with a short prayer. Divine love, love flowing, flowing through, through me, blesses, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, thank you. If our our greeters would come forward, please, and collect those. Wow, what a special weekend. Thank you for sharing your time with us, for breathing with us today, for gifting us with your presence and your offerings. We're so grateful for you. For those who are online, you know, go ahead and in the feed, put in the names of those people you'd like to remember today. We'll take those names and add them to our prayer list. They'll be prayed over for 30 days. these gifts and for you givers we say thank you god three times together please thank, thank you god. god thank you god thank you god, thank thank you, god. god. Amen. amen okay we have a few announcements as i mentioned before we have the opportunity to um, have prayers Get shared or support you in prayer, please go ahead and use our prayer box to the right of the fellowship doors 
We have a team that will pray over them for 30 days. I send them on to Silent Unity. They also pray over them for 30 days. We also have a prayer chaplain this morning, Jackie, who will pray with you in person, in the moment. If you would like to, just let her know and you'll, she will take care of you from there. Thank you for checking our website, for being here, continuing to, to click that like button so that you know how, what all is coming up and how we're showing up in the community. Uh, be sure to connect up with our groups. There's Mind Shifters on Tuesday evenings. All these things are there to help you find your way back to you. Our Course in Miracles Made Easy. They have a special two-class um, session coming up soon. You'll find details on our website, and please check it out. There, it's amazing what you will learn about yourself and what you can help support others with by getting involved. To, uh, following our Sunday service today, we will have a special bike blessing, whether it's a trike or a Harley. Bring it on. We're going to bless them all. And uh, then come back in right away and celebrate our in-house picnic, in the house. So thank you for being a part of that. Let's see if I've got everything. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Bring, tomorrow we have the parade meet here at 1030. You might want to get here a little early because I'm going to guess it will be packed. On the square, they have the service at 1030, but if you want to be in the parade from the very beginning, you'll need to be here. So if you'd still like to be part of the parade later, just catch us along the route. But we'll need people to be here at 1030. Bring candy. Bring, I, I mean, we brought some, but I think there was some sampling going on. Yeah, it's safety. It is his quality control guy here. <laughs> So uh, we'll have whatever's left of that to throw. Uh, <coughs> next week... <laughs> there were 150 feet. <laughs> <laughs> then next week on June 12th, while we have our... Pro um, no, June 5th, we are going to be honoring those people that have made a difference in this spiritual community. You remember last fall, we had a fundraiser to purchase memorial plaques. So right after following the, the service next Sunday, we will set up the plaques in here and have a, a time for people just to come in. We'll start off with prayer and just give you that time to, to be with those thoughts, those memories that you have of them before we install them into the atrium area. Plus, we will have, I'm hoping, Yes? Will we also have that ready to go next week? Okay. So plus we have a, a surprise um, that will be showing up in the atrium next week. So when you come in, take a look as you walk through. Yes. Okay. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. This is the information on the Christ Mind, the special classes that are coming up. I will be talking about that right now. Mary, she's on me. She's got me going. She knows. So after we have this quiet reflection time, which is a free flow time, we will have refreshments and things. At 1130, we will have our dedication for our lending library. So please be here for that. It's going to be a stellar morning. So thank you for that. I think I've got everything. I think I got everything. All right. If you would please go ahead and stand. We're going to close out with our prayer for protection and our peace song and then we got our bike blessing all right all together please the light of god surrounds us the love of god enfolds us the power of god protects us the presence of god watches over us wherever we are god is and all is well and so it is amen one two three
Thank you. 